Welcome back kids. I am so glad to see you. We had such a great time last week uh, reading the story. This is the Christmas story and we made a wonderful craft. It was an ornament for our tree. Did you put yours up? I did. We have a great book for you today. It's called The Crippled Lamb and it's by Max Licato. We also have our project and there's stuff inside. I can't wait to get into it. And mom and dad, I just want to let you know week three is coming up and it is going to be where we celebrate the birth of our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So mom, if you can get the cake ready for that and we can frost it together next week and make our party hat. I am just excited about that. So are you guys ready? Are we, are we ready to go? Let's go. Hi friends. I am so glad that you joined us today. My name is Miss Katie and I am here with Sister Pearl and we are going to be reading to you The Crippled Lamb by Max Lucado. Now, I don't know about you, Sister Pearl, but this is my favorite book of the season. Miss Katie, I love this Christmas book. So, do you think we should read it to the kids? I think we should start. All right, let's begin. Remember this, The Crippled Lamb. Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Josh felt sad when he saw the other lambs with snow white wool and no spots. He felt sad when he saw the other sheep with their moms and dads because he didn't have a mom or dad. But he felt saddest when he saw the other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh felt sad and alone except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. She was brown with white blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was as round as a barrel and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. How interesting, a cow as a sheep's best friend? It really is, wow. it really is. They loved to pretend they were on adventures in the distant lands. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking into the valley. They were good friends. But even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard hard. Some days he just felt alone. He really felt alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there were more grass. The sheep had been in the valley so long the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they were going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, Slowpoke. You'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. Oh no, my heart breaks just for Mind him. You. That's when Joshua looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of him. 
They're right. They are right, my little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is just too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Joshua looked at the man for a long time. Then he turned slowly and began to limp away. When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and saw all the other sheep headed towards the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose and fell on a rock. Just then he heard Abigail behind him. And Abigail said what she always said when Josh felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. What a great friend. <sighs> what a great friend. What a great friend. Slowly, the two friends turned and walked to the stable together. By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some of the hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry, and the hay tasted good. For a little while, Joshua felt, forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said after the, they finished eating. You've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he laid down in the corner on some straw and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lie down beside him, and he was glad to have Abigail as a friend. Soon, Josh was asleep. At first, he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back in the, sh in the sleep he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. Can you read it again? Yeah. Just, just from there. Yeah. Okay, let that noise go. I was going to say, I'm going to start this whole page over. Okay, Soon, Josh was asleep. At first, he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep, he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. He dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, strange noises woke him up. Huh. I wonder what it could be. I wonder. Abigail, Abigail, <laughs> he whispered. Wake up, I'm scared. Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp hanging on the wall. Somebody is here, Josh whispered. They looked across the dimly lit stable. There, laying on some fresh hay in the feed box, was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him he, tell him what was going on. But Abigail was just as surprised as Josh. Josh looked again at the woman and the child, then limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually there were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken them on their trip across the valley. Oh no. Then Josh remembered his own soft wool warm full. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said, so said softly. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying back, carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. 
The little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered who he might be. His name is Jesus, Mary spoke as if she knew Josh's question. God's son, he came from heaven to teach us about God. Isn't that wonderful? It's so wonderful. Just then, there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a bright light and heard the angels, they began. Then the, they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer. Wow. Joshua looked down at the baby. Somehow he knew this was a special child. And this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been like the other sheep, he would have been in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. He turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. The end. What a great book. What a great book. Could you imagine being there to welcome the baby Jesus? Oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. It is. It really is. And it just, it's a great reminder of just who we are and where we're at. It doesn't matter if we're the littlest little in the world or the biggest biggest in the world. All of us is special in each and every way that God made us. And God has a plan for our life. Yes. Always. Always. So are you ready to go? I'm so ready. Okay, guys, then we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Miss Judy, and I work in the nursery at Cornerstone Church. I miss seeing everybody. How are you doing? Okay, so the book we read today was called The Crippled Lamb. Now it is time to do our little project, right? Go get your bags. Does everybody have their bag? And let's see what we're going to do today. I have, oh, I have a cup that looks like four legs. That's a cup. And we have some cotton balls, lots of cotton balls. Don't be throwing anybody with the cotton balls. And we have a lamb. Okay, now you know what else you're going to need? Remember you got a scissors and do you still have your glue stick and we need a sharpie okay now let's take the cup and four legs for the lamb and we're gonna give him some legs right so color the legs and color the legs and if you color your fingers that's fine look Miss Judy has a black finger already one, two, three, four colored legs. That's the legs of the lamb. Now, I want you to pick up your little lamb and get your scissors. And you know what? If you need help, you gotta ask for help, right? We're gonna cut out our little lamb. And while we're cutting, now remember, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it. And you can come back and we're gonna be done cutting the lamb. Take your time, no cutting fingers, okay? I'm almost done cutting my lamb. Are you getting help? Don't cut off his ears. And we are almost done. Okay, we have a little lamb. Now we're gonna take the glue stick and what do we have to do with these cotton balls? A lamb has lots of hair, right? So we take the glue stick and we put it all over the cup. 
get a lot of glue on there. And we need on the sides, we're gonna put the hair everywhere. Just go crazy with the glue, right? Don't break your cup. Okay. Close the glue stick so that we don't dry it out. And then we take the cotton balls. Now we're gonna put them everywhere. And you know what else we can do? Take it and pull it open and stick it everywhere. Just have fun sticking those cotton balls, right? Because what are we making? A lamb? Because we read about the crippled lamb. And do you know who, read, who wrote that book? Max Lucado. And I bet you enjoyed the story, huh? Okay, we have the lamb. But we don't know if it's a lamb, so we need something else. Let's take a picture of our lamb. Take the glue stick, get some glue behind it. And now we have to give him a face. And we're gonna take it, put it right there, and oh, ta-da! Our little lamb is done. Did you have fun doing that? I did. And guess what? That's it for today. Until next time. Bye.